Gorillas are the largest of the great apes. They can weigh up to 270 kilograms, almost 600 pounds, and can stand on their hind legs up to 6 feet tall. We share 98.3% of our DNA with them, making them our closest living relatives after bonobos and chimpanzees. There are two species of gorilla, the western and the eastern gorilla, each of which is divided into two subspecies. They live in equatorial Africa, each species separated by about 560 miles of Congo Basin forest. Today, we ask the question, could gorillas survive in North America? All four subspecies of gorilla are listed as endangered or critically endangered by the IUCN. They are thought to be around 316,000 western lowland gorillas, 5,000 eastern lowland gorillas, and just 880 mountain gorillas left in the wild, with the destruction of habitat and threats from poaching leading to their demise. Perhaps considering other countries as a refuge for these magnificent animals could help to recover their populations. But does North America offer any habitat that gorillas would be able to survive in? Although their global distribution is very limited, gorillas live in a variety of habitats and occupy a range of elevations. Mountain gorillas live at altitudes that range from 2,200 to 4,300 meters or 7,200 to 14,100 feet. They mostly live on the slopes of three dormant volcanoes along the Albertine Rift, inhabiting the montane cloud forests, which are misty and cold. The vegetation ranges from very dense lower down the slopes to sparsely covered higher up. The mountain gorillas move to the bamboo forests when the fresh shoots are available, into the giant senecio zone to eat the plant when flowering, and areas where gallium vines grow year-round. In contrast, the lowland gorilla lives in low-altitude dense tropical forests and lowland swamps and marshes. These habitats are considered vital for the western lowland gorilla and the isolation of large swampy forests has helped to protect the species. The eastern lowland gorilla inhabits mountainous regions and lowland tropical forests. They can be found on peat bogs, swampland, primary forests, and moist woodland. Although the high altitudes of the mountain gorilla's habitat can be cold, they rely on the vegetation that stretches from the tropical rainforests up the mountainsides. The environment in which they live is important to their survival and is unique to the regions they inhabit. North America doesn't have this kind of climate. The most heavily forested regions of the mainland US are Maine, New Hampshire, and West Virginia. These states are also mountainous or have extensive mountain ranges that could provide suitable habitats for gorillas and a range of vegetation for them to feed on, but the weather may not be suitable. The climate in New Hampshire and Maine is considered humid continental. The temperatures can dip below freezing in the winter, with significant snowfall on higher ground. Mountain gorillas in Virunga National Park live at high altitudes, and it can snow on some of the volcano peaks, but they are not adapted to the extreme cold. Mountain gorillas do have thicker fur than lowland gorillas, but would not cope in the prolonged winters of New England. In contrast, West Virginia has a humid subtropical climate, but is also considered one of the wettest states with frequent precipitation in the form of rain or snow. Ski resorts in the mountainous regions are a testament to the cold winters despite the warm and mild summers. The average temperature in the lowlands of Virunga National Park, home of the mountain gorilla, varies between 23 degrees Celsius and 28 degrees Celsius, while in higher altitudes, it ranges between 16 degrees Celsius and 24 degrees Celsius. The climate on mainland North America, where habitat may be suitable, would not sustain a population of gorillas. Although there are hotter states, these are less likely to support the kind of vegetation that gorillas rely upon. The only tropical rainforest found in North America is El Junque National Forest in Puerto Rico. As far as habitat goes, this could potentially provide a suitable environment for a population of lowland gorillas. Montane forests are patchy across the states. They form isolated islands of vegetation that would unlikely support a population of mountain gorillas. The vegetation in North America is very different from that of equatorial Africa, and being mostly herbivorous. The gorillas don't just rely on this vegetation for shelter, but also as their food source. So, what do gorillas eat, and would North America be able to provide the right diet for them? Gorillas eat a variety of different vegetation. This differs between the subspecies, 
and depends on the habitat in which they live. Mountain gorillas eat leaves, stems, pith, and shoots from 142 different plant species. They also consume bark and flowers. Fruits make up a minimal amount of the mountain gorilla's diet, less than 2%, and invertebrates even less so, at just 0.1% of the total food they eat. Male mountain gorillas can eat as much as 19 kilograms, or 42 pounds of vegetation a day, and females around 15 kilograms, or 33 pounds. The other species and subspecies of gorilla also eat the same diet, but in different proportions. For the eastern lowland gorilla, fruit can make up as much as a quarter of their diet. It is more sparsely available than some of the other vegetation. So as a result, the eastern lowland gorilla travels further each day to feed, compared to mountain gorillas. Western lowland gorillas also eat a significant amount of fruit, and this varies between seasons. During the drier months, less fleshy fruit is available and they may have to travel further to find their preferred food source. In North America, it is questionable whether there would be sufficient vegetation of the right type available for gorillas to feed on. They eat termites and ants which are both abundant in North America, but these only make up a small proportion of the gorilla's diet. The lowland species need densely forested habitats. The eastern forests of the United States are predominantly broadleaf, whilst those in the west are primarily coniferous. Gorillas rely on a variety of leaves, shoots, and roots that would be more typical of broad-leaved forests. In the States, these cover an area of about 384 million acres. As we have already discussed, however, the climate in the most heavily forested states is not suitable for the survival of gorillas. El Junque National Forest in Puerto Rico provides a much more gorilla-friendly habitat, and because it is situated between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn, it has a tropical climate and therefore a year-round growing season, providing plenty of vegetation for gorillas. What about competition with other species or threats in the wild? In the wild, gorillas have few threats from non-human sources. In North America, there may be competition from the likes of bears over berry harvests and available roots and shoots. Both animals can dig for roots in the soil or climb trees in search of their food source. Fresh shoots are highly sought after for both of these animals, and competition over them may be fierce if their niches overlap. In Puerto Rico, however, threats from bears would not be present. Deforestation and the destruction of gorilla habitat are their biggest threat. They are also relentlessly hunted and killed for their bushmeat trade. Because gorillas are so similar to humans, they are affected by the same diseases that we are. Tragically, Several hundreds of gorillas in the Republic of Congo were wiped out by the Ebola virus in 2004. A study two years later in 2006 concluded that the virus was responsible for killing more than 5,000 gorillas in Africa. Those held in captivity across the world also have become infected with the recent COVID-19 virus. In conclusion, we do not believe that gorillas would be able to survive in North America. The climate is not suitable for them and where the habitat may provide the right kind of broadleaf vegetation, the seasonal variations and cold winters would not allow them to survive. The only exception to this appears to be El Junque National Forest on the Caribbean island of Puerto Rico. This forest encompasses 28,000 acres of tropical rainforest situated on the Sierra de la Quillo Mountains. With gorillas in sharp decline across Africa, maybe reintroducing them to other refuge areas could help to recover their numbers. But what effect would this have on the other species that are endemic to those areas? That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.